Eric Mangini, the former Jet and Browns head coach, he disagrees with me a lot today. Let's bring him in live and start with the Jets. I said to me, if you, if you start today, April, whatever it is, and you go to January 5th, end of the regular season, the only priority for the Jets to be viable, keep Aaron Rodgers upright. Not tight end, just keep him upright. Now, I was okay with the offensive tackle. But you're bringing up an interesting point during the break, and I want you to share it with our audience on the Jets pick. Yeah, so Joe Douglas comes in, his introductory press conference, he talks about how they're going to fix the offensive line. So I look back at it. They've brought in 30 offensive linemen since he's been there. 30. They've drafted seven, three number ones and a number two, so they've drafted high. They brought in 23 free agents and spent somewhere between 175 and $200 million dollars on free agent offense linemen, and, and we're back to the same spot. We're talking about keeping Aaron Rodgers uh, upright. They brought in three free agents this offseason to help fix the offensive line. So at some point, like, like I get it, they, they're trying, and, and maybe just law of averages, this this will work out. But you got, you got a, an opportunity to go get Brock Bowers and play some 12 personnel, two tight end sets, where in that situation, you've got quick answers for Aaron Rodgers. You've got the ability to, to balance the formation, run left, run right, throw to either side out of balance formations, use those guys in protection. And it's just, it's just I understand the O-line's a problem, and I understand you have a 40-year-old quarterback, but it, th this process hasn't worked. So, so maybe they've radically changed the process, but we're talking about 30 guys that have come through there, and it's still a problem. No, that's a good point. Now, I thought it was odd that the Falcons got a quarterback, but it's a bad. It's the worst division in the sport. It's a bad division. They now have the best starting quarterback, in my opinion, in the division, and the best backup in the division. Maybe the best backup in the NFC or the league. I'm okay being quarterback heavy for a year, and I don't know what Kirk Cousins is going to look like at 36 off an Achilles. I'm okay with it. You don't like it. Yeah, I, I heard you. I heard you auditioning for the uh, Atlanta Falcons PR job earlier. <laughs> I, I do. I do have a problem with it. And you, and I heard you say, you, you know, if you have a great asset, you have to insure a great asset. O okay, but they're not a great asset. They haven't had a winning season in six years. So become a great asset. So you got Kirk Cousins. You've got B. John Robinson. You've got Drake London. You've got Kyle Pitts. Again, you can add an elite tight end. You can add another star wide receiver. You've got a very good offensive line. And, and you move forward with the $100 million that you spent on the quarterback. And I'm, I'm good with, with a backup quarterback. I think it's important. And I think quarterbacks are currency. And I think it's valuable. But, but you're, you're, you're dealing with the eighth pick overall. And, and you're dealing with a situation where you've got a chance to take a, a real jump as an offense and add another explosive weapon and maybe become that great asset that we're talking about. And, yeah, if Kirk gets hurt, it could be a problem. But if Patrick Mahomes gets hurt, they, that's a problem, too, for, for Kansas City. So at that point, trade back if, 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 that's, if that's what you want to do. Add some assets so if you are really good, maybe you're picking high with the team that you traded with, just like – Chicago found themselves in the situation with Carolina, but the owner's 81 years old. It's not like he's sitting around waiting, like I'm going to wait another two or three years for us to be the team that I, we envisioned ourselves to be. So, so you've got, you don't hire Bill Belichick. You could agree or disagree with that. You make that decision and then you draft a quarterback after you sign a hundred million dollar quarterback. You know, if, if, if I'm the owner, I'm, I'm sitting back and thinking, Maybe, maybe I got to reevaluate things. Yeah. The, um, you know, people said, I saw Bo Nix play live twice. Oregon mostly schemed up his plays. But that's what Sean Payton does. <laughs> he, he's like Shanahan, I'm going to scheme up the play. Get rid of it fast and accurately. I think Bo Nix works in Denver. He may be a top of the second round guy, but I watched them as a freshman beat an Oregon team and Justin Herbert on the final drive as an 18-year-old. I don't know. I think he's a little – I don't know. I, I, I like Penix and Bo Nix more than everybody else. I wasn't a big J.J. McCarthy guy. Did Denver reach, in your opinion, on Nix? I mean, they need a quarterback, don't they? Well, when Peyton Manning, talk, Peyton Manning talked about Denver wanting J.J. McCarthy, I have a feeling that Peyton Manning was right. And, and when he looked at, 
at the draft room after they after they took him, it didn't look like there was a lot of celebrating and high fiving going on that they got Bo Nix. And maybe I'm wrong on it, but it's it felt sort of like that situation where you wake up Christmas morning and you're hoping for an Xbox and you get a bunch of clothes. <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's practical. It, it's it's okay. Like I get it. It's a ni it's nice that you got a gift. And 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 it's the old adage: you never want to go shopping hungry. With that quarterback room, they're shopping starving. Yeah. Okay, so you got Stidham, you got Zach, you've got Ben DiNucci, and then you got Russell w uh, Wilson's ridiculous dead cap money all sitting in that quarterback room. You, you had to go get somebody. But I, I heard all the stats and I heard all the positive things, but you, you watch the reaction. It didn't feel like, like that passion that you get when you got someone. Hey, we couldn't believe he was there. We're so lucky he fell to us. None of those, none of those comments were coming out of out of the, you know, the 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 post uh, post draft interviews. So the Raiders didn't move up to get a quarterback. They got a tremendous tight end. What did you say about that? What do you think about that? It, I, it looked like they took best available at that point, and yeah. and I've always felt that a tight end is, is incredibly valuable because of of the type of pressure that they can put on the inside of the defense and how that opens up everything outside. And we see it all the time with Travis Kelsey, the value that has. And if you need quick answers, and, and, and we talk about protection for quarterbacks, the tight end can be that protection because they get open quickly, they give you, they give you uh, throws that are, are makeable and easy completions. And it, to, to add a player like that and, and, and an explosive player like that, to me, I think not only helps them offensively inside, but it helps open up things outside and to some degree the running game. Yeah. What was your favorite pick? Did you have one you loved? I, I liked that the Giants stood where they were and, and took neighbors. I, I liked him a lot. I think that in Brian's offense, and, and Brian Dayball has always been very creative offensively. He was my offensive coordinator in Cleveland. He was my quarterback coach at the Jets. So I've been with him a long time and understanding how he thinks he wants guys like neighbors who has that versatility. They can play inside, they can play outside, they can hurt you on wide receiver screens, you can hand them the ball. But it's not just that, he also has the ability to get open on traditional runs, and there, there's that element of run after the catch where he can generate some plays. And the Giants, they, they need someone that can generate some plays. So I, I, I'm glad they didn't go quarterback and, and muddy things up, and they got a a weapon for, for Daniel Jones, who has shown that he's been able to win in this system when he's been healthy. By the way, wide receiver is the biggest miss rate in the last 20 years in the draft. What's your theory on that? Because I, like everybody said, oh, Chiefs got Xavier Worthy, and I'm like, not a polished route runner, really fast, 165 pounds, track guy, a lot of drops. I, I mean, Mahomes and Andy Reid, I'm sure they'll make it work, but I mean, they've, I mean, if you go look at Ladarius, Tony didn't work. Sky Moore hasn't worked. They've had a lot of guys that haven't worked. Why even Kansas City, as well run as they are in San Francisco, they've both missed on a half a dozen wide receivers. Why is that such a hard position? Well, there, there's a million of them. And I have, I wasn't very good at evaluating wide receivers <laughs> when I was a head coach. And and I missed on, on some, especially in Cleveland, I had a couple second rounders that I took wide receivers on. And as you, as you go through that evaluation process, there's where the guy is as, as a player in college, and you can get excited by some of the wild plays and, and some of the explosive plays and, and lose track of who they're against and, and, and who's throwing in the football and how much growth they have as a wide receiver. I think that's, that's an, an element of it too, is how much growth they have as they come into the NFL or is what you're seeing on tape really the ceiling of, of who they're going to be. And, and it's, it's hard to evaluate, but you see a lot of late round guys and you see small school guys or programs that aren't as developed. They really hit it big in the NFL because when they get into a sophisticated system, when they get into sophisticated training, they pop where some of these guys were at top programs, they've leveled out and, and you see what you get and, and it's, it's just not good enough in the NFL. Great stuff, Eric Mangini coming in hot. Uh, loved it, Coach, as always. <laughs> Great seeing you. <laughs> Great seeing you, too, Colin. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including...
exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, and more wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.